Hello, my friends of the psychedelic renaissance. It's Tom Hatzis, your psychedelic historian, although not doing psychedelic history today, but instead bringing you The Medicine Diaries, Episode 4. So Eden and I were having a magical party at our house for New Year's Eve, and uh, guests were set to arrive around 8.30, 9 o'clock. So earlier in the day, around 5 o'clock or so, I think it was around 5, 4 or 5 o'clock or so, I decided to eat uh, 4 grams of mushrooms. Now, the reason I had the mushrooms earlier in the day before the guests arrived was that we were all going to take Molly that night together. And one of the things I like to do is when you're coming down off the mushrooms to kind of give it an MDMA booster is pretty fantastic. Um, I call it a flower flip. I've heard it called a hippie flip, though. But whatever you call it doesn't matter. Just rest assured that Molly and mushrooms is the greatest combination since bread and wine. Now, I'm not really going to get into the Molly portion of the night because you guys all know Molly. It's the same thing every time. Everyone's, ah, uh, and everybody's touching each other and that, uh, yeah. So, you, you know, Molly, right? How <laughs> Molly is. Um, the thing, though, I did want to talk about with the mushrooms was that for the first time, I actually didn't um, have intention meditations leading up to the session. Usually for a few days beforehand, I'll do some cannabis meditation and, you know, sit there and, you know, try to visualize, you know, what it is that I, where I want to go with this experience, right? Uh, this time was a little different in that I didn't do that. And that, um, I guess, I don't want to say dropping of the ball because it wasn't really dropping the ball. It just wasn't my intention to do that. But just that, that lack of that aspect of the spell actually did present itself during the mushroom experience. So what I mean is that all these other previous uh, explorations I've had, I've gone in with an intention, whether it's for uh, confidence or to feel some kind of uh, love that I felt like I missed maybe as a kid or something. And this was, I didn't do that this time. I was just like, hey, let's just go right into it. And it was interesting. It was the first mushroom experience I've ever had where there were there were no visuals, like, like really nothing. And for four grams, you know, you'd expect there to be visuals, but there really wasn't. Of course, there were the, 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 the jewels and the colored patterns. I mean, I was obviously in the palace, but there weren't any, in fact, you know what, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, at one point, I actually remembered what angels looked like and tried to make them form. And I could see them in my head and I realized, wait, no, 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 you're just making that up. That's not really them. And that actually goes to that whole other kind of issue that I talk about sometimes when people say, well, aren't you just making all this stuff up? Well, no, because even when I was tripping and tried to do it, I could recognize that it was my own memories of what angels looked like and that they weren't actually there this time. So no visions, no angels. What the fuck was going on <laughs> during the, the experience? Well, it was about four or five hours of, not to sound too cliche, of just swimming in Gaia's love. It was just, you know, seeing the jewels of the palace and just feeling, you know, be, you know, when you're just kind of being fucked by Gaia, you know, that feeling, that ecstatic, like, that's all it was. And now, here's where I messed up. You see, I didn't integrate this experience for this whole week. I think maybe because it was such like a baseline experience of love and I hadn't put any specific intention in there, it was kind of easy for me to overlook. But the thing is, that love, <laughs> that love's coming from there. And it's a very powerful love. And you have to still integrate it. And I did it. And because I did it, I really, really fucked up. While there are many different ways to integrate, the two that I prefer that I rather clumsily didn't do this week are journaling. That's why I haven't reached for my journal during this video. I'm like, oh, what did I write? Yeah, I, I didn't write anything this time. Sorry. And uh, the other thing is staying off social media, which I think is really important. And I didn't do it. And that's kind of where I really messed up. But let's not let my mess up go to waste. Let's unpack it, dissect it, explore it, and most importantly, learn from it. So I'm sure as many of you saw, Ricky Gervais, a comedian who I happen to like very much, just handed the intolerant left their asses at uh, the Grammy, an award show, some award show. Now, personally, I don't like the intolerant left any more than I like the intolerant right. So when any comedian is making fun of anybody on those two extremes, I, you know, find it to be very funny. So this morning, I very unwisely and very... 
un in unintegratingly, whatever, uh, very unintegratingly was on Facebook. And a friend of mine shared an article about Ricky Gervais's speech. And I very stupidly commented, and I don't remember what I said, but I'm sure the words leftist asswipes <laughs> was in there somewhere. And that was very dumb. That wasn't coming from a place of love. That was like, I, I just became another one of those morons saying something stupid on the internet. And it's like, dude, like, we just went over this two weeks ago. Integration, people, it is that important. So let's take this moment to integrate. Let's take this moment to say that people on the extreme left and the extreme right, well, they don't need more hatred. They don't need to be despised more. They actually need more love. They need more compassion and understanding. And I guess maybe that's the lesson of this week, was maybe I wasn't supposed to integrate at all to learn that lesson, to see it clear as day, like right in from, front of my face, like, dude, you just did this, and that was such a shitty thing to do. You know, no, there's no provocation at all. So let's integrate that. Remember that love is far more valuable than hate. Um, and to try to love those who are really hurting, because anybody that's that extreme, I mean, they, they really are hurting. That, that's what the problem is. Um, so, yeah, I guess let's leave it there. Uh, let's leave it on integrating love. I'm Tom Hatzes, your psychedelic historian, reminding you that you free your mind by integrating love. <laughs> Peace.